Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Flemington Racecourse here on Tuesday. It is November the 5th, 2019. I'm going to look at the featured 7th race from Flemington, but before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at HorseRacingKit5 for more selections for racecourses around the world, and I mean around the world, and uh, you better go check out my Twitter page because I will have selections up there for the full card uh, for today's program from Flemington. Also, my pick for or quality play will be up there also. We'll talk about the pick four here with, with the horses I'll be using for this race, but the other horses, you have to go check out my pick, uh, my uh, Twitter page, so make sure you do that. But we're going to look at the featured seventh race, the Melbourne Cup, so let's get on to it. The seventh race from Flemington, it's the $5.3 million Group 1 Melbourne Cup, sponsored by Lexus here. It's for three-year-olds and upwards. We have 24 horses entered going the 3,200 meters, or two miles on the turf course. The ground's going to have a lot of moisture in it, so it's a very heavy, kind of softish ground. Uh, more towards the heavy side than the good side, so keep that in mind. Very tough race here. Uh, I'm going to give you five horses that I will use in the pick four of the quaddy, but as a top selection, I'm going to take the number 13 horse, Raymond Tusk. Um, the horses I'll be using in the... In the um in the quaddy or the pick four, I'll use the thir three horse Master of Reality. We'll also use the eight horse Mustagier. We'll also use the um, number 12 horse Prince of Iran and the 20 horse Il Paradiso. But we'll start off as my top selection the 13 horse Raymond Tusk, this four year old horse by High Chaparral. Richard Hannon trains this one. Jamie Spencer gets the mount. <clears throat> this horse has been on the, uh, the st on the uh, bench since August. August 24th was his most recent outing in the UK at York. A mile 11 16th in the uh, Ebor handicap. And he finished fourth by two lengths that day. Uh, he was really closing up well on quite firm ground. He had a decent turn of foot. He showed a lot of at seven at seventeen one. He did have a high weight of one hundred thirty four pounds. Today he's going to get a, a good weight of one hundred nineteen pounds, which I think should suit him well. Also off the break should suit him well, and I also think a little bit given the ground should suit him well. Before that, a race where he had a little bit too much given the ground came in Ascot. Group 1 uh, Ascot Gold Cup, 2.5 miles, 4,000 meter trip. He finished 7th by 8.5 lengths there. He had a little bit of turn of foot late, but it wasn't anything to call home about. It. You know, he, he could have improved there, uh, which he did in the next start in the Ebor Handicap. And then before that, Newberry in the... Um Aston Sticks. It was just a group three going the 2400 or the mile and a half trip, and he finished third by five lengths. He never quickened up and never weakened out of it. He stayed the trip well, but he got beat by a few good horses there. Crystal Ocean being the uh, the winner that they went on to uh, have a very good place in the uh, in, in the King George behind Enable. And, you know, that was one of the best showdowns of the UK flat season this year. But, um, you know, this, this horse, you know, he ran his heart out there. Uh, and then before that at Ascot, two miles in the group three Cigar Sticks. He finished second by three and a quarter lengths behind DXP who was the bridesmaid to the best uh, stayer in uh, England this year, Stradivarius. Again, this horse, he ran well. He just couldn't get there. First off, a little bit of refreshing. Also, the highway probably got to him. And then they took the horse to Qatar to run in the Emirates uh, Trophy, where he um, he finished sixth by four and a half lengths. He beat half the, the, the horses home, but he could still uh, improve off of that. I like him staying here. He's drawn well in the three barrier. Uh, you know, I think he's coming through this race well. At 16 to one, definitely use him on your ticket. You have to also use the Three horse master of reality. Joseph O'Brien trains with this four year old gentleman by Frankel. Uh, Frankie Dettori gets up. Uh, I believe Frankie's looking for his first um, his first Melbourne Cup. Joseph O'Brien's looking for his second here. But um, this horse's most recent outing. He's, um, excuse me, as my iPad craps out, it always does it during these videos, but his most recent outing came in the Irish St. Ledger at the Curra a few weeks ago on firm ground, the 2800 meter journey or mile three quarters there, and he finished fifth by four and a half lengths. He had a little bit of a turn of foot early on, but then he just kind of flattened out. He's the kind of horse that's going to absolutely love the sludgy cat testing conditions today. The ground maybe was a little bit too firm but, uh, last time at the Curra, but, you know, like I said, uh, today sludgy conditions, drawn well, I think he's going to go up. Before that, in the uh, Irish St. Ledger trial at the Curra, mile three quarters on soft ground, he finished third by four lengths, and again, he was closing up a little bit that day, he ran a decent effort, and then before that, in the Ascot, uh, in the Gold Cup at Ascot, two and a half miles of the 4,000 meter journey, he finished third by one and a half lengths, he stalked all the way around the race course, he needed that extra turn of foot late, which he didn't get, but he hauled his own out. His, he's only won once this year, um, that came back in Ireland at Navin, in the Vintage Crop Stakes, which he 
he won uh, by uh, half a length there, and he just sat very chilly on the front end and just went away with it. It was a very good run on very wet ground. He gets Frankie up, which is a plus. He's running off a little bit of a break. You know, I think at 13-1 to 1 with a good weight, he's another horse, a very likely winner. Uh, I would definitely use him. He, he would be my second selection here. Um, these Some of these horses, I'm not giving you an exact order, but right now I could tell you 13-3 is the top two in my eyes. Uh, we'll also use the eight horse here, uh, Mustajir, this uh, six-year-old gelding here by Medicine. Uh, Damien Oliver gets the leg up. This horse is most recent out and came to the Caulfield Cup a few weeks ago at Caulfield, and that day he, he finished sixth, it was an all-out finish, he just needed to get the good head in front, but he still ran his heart out, it, you know, he, he, it was a good race, before that, as my, again, my iPad craps out, I have to get, start getting a new iPad, before that he ran in the UK, in the EBO or Handicap, and that day he, he won by a three-quarters length, again, it was an all-out finish, he closed up well from the backpack, he stayed the trip well, it was a very good race there, and then before that, um, he, he ran at, in the Curra in Ireland, mile three-quarters in the group two, and uh, he, he, he um, finished fifth by eight length, uh, by three and a quarter lengths there, and that day on a little bit dry ground, he never really got into it. Um, you know, he, he could have improved a lot more. Um, and, and then before that, the Kerr on firm ground and a mile 516 uh, staying, he, um, that day, he, the distance was just a little bit too short. The 2100 meters, he really never got into it. And, um, you know, he, he's the kind of horse, I think as the distances go longer, he's going to get better. But um, looking over his most recent form, he's coming to this race well. Um, he's already had a start here in Australia, which I think is good. Um, you know, I think he's sitting on a good run, so we'll also use him at 21. He's a bit of a wise guy horse another horse we'll use here would be the number 12 horse prince of iran who i actually had a few weeks ago in the geelong cup at geelong um and that day um he, he won by half a length and uh, you know he closed up from a stock position and a very on a little bit uh, good round he just went away with it a very good run before then the call at caulfield and the herbert power stakes he finished second by half length again he stalked most right around the race course he had a little bit of turn of foot you know he still ran a good race and then before that he ran a kempton the September stakes. He finished third by one and three quarter lengths. He closed up well late, but he still could have improved, and also the trip wasn't to his liking. Keep in mind, the one at Royal Line who won the September stakes is actually running Monday afternoon in uh, the UK in the uh, Floodlit stakes at, at Captain did again. But um, this horse, uh, you know, he, he just needed that extra turn of foot. Also, 24 wasn't to his liking. And then before that, they ran him in the uh, in the Ebor, where he finished eighth by four and three quarter lengths. And again, a little bit of a turn of foot, but wasn't anything spectacular. I like him back here today to the uh, 20 um, to the 3200 I think he's gonna get a good trip great draw at uh, 20 to 1 definitely use him on your take he's kind of a price play horse and I th think you also want to use the um, number 20 horse Il Paradiso a horse I backed a few times in the UK over the uh, the summer a three-year-old colt by Galileo Aiden, Aiden O'Brien looking for his first Melbourne Cup trains this one Wayne Lorden gets them out a winner of the uh, Wayne Lorden this past uh, Saturday won the uh, British Cup Philly Mayor Turf for Joseph O'Brien giving him his first uh, um uh, uh, Breeders' Cup victory as a trainer, uh, but uh, and Wynton Lorden's first Breeders' Cup win winner also. But um, this Il Paradiso, his most recent outing came at Doncaster and St. Ledger, the mile three sixteenth trip with the twenty nine hundred, and uh, he he finished fifth by five and a half lengths. He sat on the front end all throughout up until the stretch run. He kind of hit the wall Lee, but also he was running on firm ground. She doesn't really run. He runs okay on. He's a kind of horse again. He'll go up on the wet ground, but he got beat by a very good horse. The Logician went on to win Arc Weekend. At uh, at Longchamp, and then one to win a few weeks ago at Longchamp in the uh, pre um, Royal Oak, which is kind of the equivalent of the of the French. Uh, uh, it's the French Saint Ledger, so he he went on that a great fall campaign staying there he got beat by a good horse but this horse just really couldn't get to him before that they ran him at uh, at uh, in the um, at York excuse me and the um in the Lonsdale Cup, and he finished third by uh, by one and three quarter lengths. Stradivarius and DXB just ran that better race, but this horse, he was staying well. It was a good race there, and then before that, the Cura, two miles, and a handicap. He uh, won by 12, and, you know, he was facing a little lesser competition, but he still took off clear. He's another horse. He loves to stay. He's going to stay here. He's going to have to overcome a wide poster, though. He's breaking from barrier number seven, uh, 17, so it's quite far out there, but uh, if he could stay the trip well, I think he get a piece 
use it. I think this is Aiden O'Brien's best chance to win in this race. A horse, like I said, definitely you want to use him on the ticket. But to recap my selection now for the seventh from Flemington, it's the Group One Melbourne Cup. As a top selection, we'll take the thirteen horse Raymond Tusk. We'll also use the three horse here, Master of Reality. So that's my top two, basically thirteen. Three. So if you want to play your forecast or exacta, there it is. Uh, but we'll use the 13 3. We'll also use the 8 horse Mustajir on the Quadi or the Pick 4. We'll also use the 12 horse Prince of Iran and we'll also use the 20 horse Il Piridu. So, so again, to recap those selections, the 13 horse Raymond Tusk is the top selection. The second selection would be Master of Reality. So the 13 3 exacta and those numbers for the Pick 4 of the Quadi again was 13 3 8 12 20. So good luck to all and please follow me on. On Twitter for those full card previews and selections for the rest of this Flemington card. Good luck, everybody.